Hey everybody, the Network Berg here. In this lecture, we'll be going over users, user groups, as well as IP services. So it's a, a few different things we're covering, but this all relates to accessing the Microtech. So as you're aware, the default login credentials for a Microtech is admin with no password, but obviously that's not very secure. You maybe want to change that password for that admin account, or you maybe want to just create a completely separate account and not have that admin account. Um, and this is what this video will be covering. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so I've got a Winbox session here. And the first thing we want to cover is the users themselves. So users is very important. You can find your users by going to system and going to the user sub menu. And then from here, this is always a default account. You can disable the account, but you, you can't delete it as far as I recall. Um, but it's, it's highly recommended that you always change this password. So please, when you see this admin account, you've logged in for the first time, just double click it. And then there's a few awesome things that you can do here. You can see there's something called an allowed address. So this basically sets which addresses can log in or which IP ranges can log in using this account. So be careful with this as well, because if you set it for only a specific range and you're not connecting from that range, then your connection to the router will fail. So you could leave it blank if it's from anywhere, but it's highly recommended if it is an admin account to just restrict that so that um, malicious users can't potentially log on to your router board and mess about with the settings. You've also got a group option. So by default, we've got a full read and write group and we'll be looking at the groups in a second. We'll be adding some custom groups, but this is where you can select what group a user belongs to. And then obviously the password. So it's very encouraged to change the password for the account. So I might just make this one, two, three, four, five, six, but please try and use something stronger. A Big note though, if you change the password for the router board for that admin account, you need to remember what it is. If you lose that password and you try and log in again, your sessions will fail. There's no way to just recover the password from here. You're either going to have to factory reset the device or you're going to have to do a net install to get back onto the device. And that's a lot of hassle. So please make sure if you change a password, remember what it is, else you're going to have a bad time. All right. So if we want to add a new user, it's pretty simple. You can just click on the plus and you can call the user, whatever you want. You can give it a name. Like I'll, I'll maybe make this TMB underscore admin or take out the underscore. Let me just make a TMB admin. And then I'm also just going to give this full access and I'll set the password as well as one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll apply that. So now I've got a TMB admin that I can also now use to log on to the device with, and it's also got full access. If I want to disable an account, you can just click on it. You can hit the X. So I'm going to disable this admin account and that's going to cause issues because now I won't be able to log in as admin anymore. I need to log in as TMB admin, but it doesn't kill my session. So I can still just re-enable the account if I want to, but you did see the account gets grayed out once you disable it. All right, so that covers the user section. I wanna just go into the groups now, because as you see, there are three default groups and there are specific, um, let's say policies that they have access to what they can do. Um, I just quickly wanna see if I can bring up a little uh, thingy that I created on a drive. So just let me bring that up. I'm just gonna pause the video. Alrighty, unfortunately, I couldn't find the drive uh, image, but on the Micritic help um, site, there is actually something similar that shows you what the policies are and what they effectively do and grant access to. So I will pin this in a comment of the video just for you to go over yourself so you can kind of see what each little individual policy does. All right, let me just go back to the users. So system users. Uh, and then we go back to our groups. So let's say I want to create a new group that allows only Telnet access to this device. And we could do this by hitting the plus, giving the group a name. So I could just say Telnet only. And then we can specify it can only connect using Telnet. And you maybe want to also just give some additional functionality like read and write so that the user can actually do stuff. But if you take away the right access, the user will still be able to use read commands, just not any write commands. 
Um, you can also assign a skin that maybe you've had on a webfig, but this only applies to webfig. This doesn't do anything on, on Winbox or if people connect using the command line. But let's create this group, Talnet only, allow only Talnet, read and write. And I'm going to apply that. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to assign TMB admin to Talnet only. I'll apply that. And then I'm going to open up a new Winbox session. And then I'm going to connect using TMB admin with the password one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to try and connect using Winbox first. And that just fails. It just tells me the username and password is incorrect, even though I know it's correct. But let's try and connect using a terminal like Putty. So I'm just going to Talnet on 192.168.88.1. And I get prompted for my login. So admin. Sorry, <laughs> it's not admin, it's TMB admin. So TMB admin and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I can access the device and I can actually do anything that I want on the terminal window. So this is how we can restrict access for maybe specific users that you have. So you can create a group and assign the group to a specific account. All right, so that wraps up the groups and the users. Let's jump into the IP services. Okay, IP services, we can actually access through the IP and then services menu. So IP services is effectively services running on your router board, on your Microtech. So these are things like the API. It's also got FTP. So if you didn't know, your Microtech actually works like a little FTP server. If this is enabled, then you can connect to that Microtech over FTP to potentially download or upload files via FTP. Really cool. But it could also maybe be a security flaw. Uh, here we've got SSH, Telnet, Winbox, and www. So this is basically for that web fig access to work. The things that I might recommend with the IP services is if you're not going to use a service, disable it. Like the API, I might disable. The FTP, I might disable. Um, and even the www, I might just disable so that malicious people can't access those services when they, when the router board is available publicly. I might also suggest stuff like changing the port that uh, malicious users connect with, because if you just use the SSH as 2202 or Telnet as 23, then it's pretty straightforward for a malicious user to scan that port and know, okay, Telnet's open, I'm just gonna Telnet in. So you might just wanna change this port to something like 2323, so that when you Telnet to the device, you need to specify the port 2323. It's just a little bit of device hardening to make your device less susceptible to being accessible uh, through malicious users. It's also got this available from field and this I might also recommend filling in, but make sure that you put in the right details. If you put in the wrong IP range, then you're never going to be able to access the device again. So in this case, I'm just going to specify, I'll allow Telnet only from 192.168.88.0 slash 24, and then I'll apply that and that should be it so what this will do is i can only now access this device on telnet on port 2323 from this range if i was connecting from a different ip it would just fail so i can quickly test this by opening up a putty session and let's just go to telnet and let's telnet to 192.168.88.1 which is my router board's ip and the port I'm going to change to 2323 because that's what we updated it to. I'm going to open this and now I can still connect using Putty. So TMB admin, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I can still access the device and manage it. So that covers IP services. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.